If you've ever messed around in Windows enough and enabled system files in the Explorer, you've probably come across a few system files that you weren't sure what they do, such as desktop.ini, or a lot in the C drive in particular, such as the hyperfile.sys or the page file, and you might have wondered what these did, or what would happen if you just were to delete them, but you didn't go ahead and try it. Well, that's what we're gonna try in this video. We're gonna delete those files, or at least try to, and see what happens while Windows is running. So first of all, in order to actually reveal these files, you have to enable both viewing hidden files and system protected files. These are two separate settings and you go into the Windows Explorer settings and you'll be able to check view hidden files and folders and also uncheck hide system protected files and then all the files that we're going to be talking about should show up. So let's start off with first desktop.ini files. Now these obviously will appear on the desktop and you might assume being called desktop.ini that it is exclusively for the desktop folder but this is not actually the case. The desktop.ini files will appear all over the computer in any folder where you basically customize that folder's appearance. So there's not just one desktop.ini folder. In fact, if you actually go on your main desktop, there will probably be two desktop.ini files, and that's because it'll be the one from your user folder in the desktop, and also files in the public user directory desktop folder will also appear on the main desktop. So they're not in the same exact folder, but they just appear together. So that's why there's two of them. So the purpose of the desktop.ini files is to store some configuration data for how a particular folder is customized. And again, this is going to appear in any folder where you do this, not just on desktop. And it's going to be called the same exact thing, desktop.ini, no matter what folder you put it in for some weird reason. So for example, if I create a empty folder as an example, and then I look in there, there's no desktop.ini file. But if I change anything in the properties customize tab, such as switching the optimization to documents, now the desktop.ini file will appear in there. And you can see if we edit in notepad, it'll say folder type equals documents as one of those things. Another example is changing the icon for the folder. So if you do that, again, now there will be a new line in the settings for that file where it'll show what icon is set to be used in that folder. So you're probably wondering what happens if you go and delete these files? Will it ruin Windows Explorer? Will it ruin the computer? No, basically nothing will happen. I'm just gonna do this on my main computer because it's really that low risk. Basically you delete it and just those customizations for that folder no longer apply. So you can see after I delete it, any custom icon, any optimization setting that was in the customized tab of that folder in the properties menu, basically all that just gets reset. And then if I want to go and change those again, it'll just make a new desktop.ini folder. So really it doesn't matter if you delete these files unless you actually want to keep those customizations. Another interesting fact is because these files are basically all the same, you can copy one desktop.ini file into another folder and it'll apply those same configurations. So if you need to configure a whole bunch of different folders to be the same at once, you can just do that by copying those files in there. All right, so that was the desktop.ini, but what about some other system files that will magically appear after enabling the setting to view them. Well, we could talk about some that are going to appear in the main system drive, such as the C drive by default. And you might actually be familiar with some of these or heard of them before. So we can start off with hyperfile or hyperfill.sys. And this has to do with the hibernation feature in Windows. Basically, how hibernation works is before the computer shuts down, it actually takes all the current running things and processes that are in the RAM and actually writes them to the hard drive and then shuts down the computer so that when you turn the computer back on, it copies all that stuff from the hard drive back into the RAM. So basically it continues exactly where it left off but the computer was still completely off, so it wasn't using any battery. This is different from the sleep mode where everything stays in the RAM, but the computer just goes into a lower power state but doesn't turn off completely. If you don't need the hibernation feature, you can just disable the hibernation feature, which will delete that file. But what would happen if you just went ahead and deleted it by yourself? So that's what I tried, and I did all of this going forward in a virtual machine so I didn't risk ruining my computer. But basically, if you try to delete the file, it'll first say that it's in use, so you can't delete it. However, I used a program called IOBit Unlocker, which is able to basically release files sometimes if it's in use. So I tried that and was able to unlock the file from being used by the system. However, strangely, after I did that, the file just disappeared. I didn't even delete it. The file just disappeared completely. So there must be some, I don't know, reason for that. But 
Either way, the file was gone effectively. And then I didn't really notice anything different. So it looks like at least while Windows is running, deleting the file, no matter how you do it, isn't gonna really cause any crashes or anything. However, it did have an effect when I then went to try and go to, into hibernate mode. So I went to the start menu, hibernate, what I noticed was it went through the whole motions. It said like locking, it looked like it was going into hibernate mode, but when I turned the computer back on, everything was as if it was starting from brand new. So it didn't actually go into hibernate mode. It was as if I turned the computer off and then turned it back on. All the startup programs had to start from scratch. So the hibernate mode didn't actually work. So basically if you delete the hibernation file, nothing will likely happen, but just be aware that if you try to use the hibernation feature without turning the computer off and on again to generate that new hibernation file, the hibernation feature just probably won't work. So just be aware of that. All right, now the next file we can take a look at is the page file.sys file. And this is also located in the main drive, but also other drives, depending on how your page file settings are configured. Anyway, what the page file is for is Windows will take any memory that's in the RAM that is not really being used frequently and put it into this page file on the hard drive or SSD. And this will, possibly speed up the RAM if there wasn't a lot of space in the RAM available, or perhaps just make it more efficient. And basically the purpose of it is to make sure that there is more RAM available for the files and programs that are using it most frequently. And then if a program needs to access the data that was infrequently used, it can just pull it from that page file. And you can actually change the settings for the page file or disable it completely. And you can search in the start menu for advanced system properties. And then here go to performance and then settings and then in the advanced tab, you can go to virtual memory and then change. And again, here you can disable the feature, which I wouldn't recommend. I would recommend just keeping it to automatically have the system manage the page files, but you can also have it set to add multiple page files on multiple drives or move the page file, stuff like that, if you want to. So obviously knowing what the page file does, it does seem like it is a little bit more important than the hibernation file, because it could be that a lot of these programs, even though it's storing less frequently used, applications in the page file, there might still be stuff that Windows needs to run in that file if you were to delete it. So we're gonna try and delete it anyway. And I tried my absolute best to try and delete this stupid file, but I really could not do it while Windows was running. Obviously it's gonna be protected, but I tried several things like forcing it to delete with the command prompt, that didn't work. I even tried using the unlocker program again. And for that, it doesn't even try, it just says unable to unlock system path. So that must have some extra protection in there. Now, what I eventually tried was to pause the virtual machine that I was using, then mount the drive on the main machine and then delete the file in there and then unpause the virtual machine. And I was technically able to do that, but it didn't really do anything because apparently the virtual machine, from what I understand and gathered, it doesn't really read from the virtual hard drive constantly until I shut down and then it updates it. So it didn't really do anything until I shut down the computer. So I wasn't able to delete it while it was running, but then I restarted it after deleting it through the mounted virtual drive. And then that effectively restarted Windows with no page file. When Windows started back up, there was just a new page file and that was it. Now, if you were somehow able to delete the page file while Windows is running, obviously I think that would cause a lot of instability depending on what things are stored in it. So I wouldn't try it. And it seems like, however, if you do delete the page file while Windows is off, then it won't really make a difference and it'll just make a new one when it starts up again. Now the final and third file we can talk about is the swap file.sys. And apparently this is basically exactly the same thing as the page file.sys, except it's used exclusively for Windows Universal apps. I don't know why this is, but apparently they have somewhat of a different architecture that just requires a separate file to put these in. So it does the same thing as page file. And again, if you try to delete it, it goes through all the same stuff. You really can't and it'll just make a new one. So yeah, obviously it's not a good idea to mess with any of these files, but if you are wondering what happens when you delete them, now you know. So anyway, if you guys wanna keep watching though, the next video I recommend is where I was trying to find a way where if it was possible to ruin your Windows installation by deleting just one file, did such a file exist? And I did actually find a way. So click on that video if you wanna check that out. So thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.